In today's episode, we're out here taking a look at the 2017 Mazda MX-5 RF. This is the hardtop version of the very popular MX-5 Miata. Before we continue, let me apologize for sounding like a frog. I lost my voice at the New York Auto Show this year, and it's come back just barely enough for me to shoot this video before this car returns to Mazda. During the run of the last generation MX-5, Mazda realized that there are soft top customers and there are hard top customers. So although the last generation MX-5 was not designed from the start to accommodate a hard top, the hard top model actually outsold the soft top model for some years. Things are a little bit different with the 2017 MX-5 because this vehicle was designed from the ground up to be a soft top and a hard top. Because the MX-5 was designed from the start to be both a hard top and a soft top, the two models look very much like. We have basically the same front end here with this grille that looks similar but not identical to the rest of the modern Mazdas. All MX-5 Miatas in the US get full LED headlamps, LED high beams, and LED low beams, and there's a small LED accent strip there as well. The MX-5 isn't just Mazda's most fun car sold in the United States. This also is the distillation of a particular philosophy of car building. Some manufacturers chase performance by putting bigger engines under the hood. Some manufacturers chase handling by putting bigger tires under the wheel wells. The trouble with bigger tires and bigger engines is that the overall vehicle has to be heavier in order to accommodate them. Mazda's philosophy is very different. And true to the classic British and Italian roadsters, which obviously inspired the MX-5 from the very beginning, Mazda focused on lightweight construction. Depending on the version of the MX-5 that you buy, you could get an MX-5 that weighs as little as 2,300 pounds. That's a full thousand pounds lighter than a light mid-size sedan in America. The light curb weight of the MX-5 allows them to put skinnier tires on the vehicle, yet still handle well. Smaller brakes, yet still handle well. And of course, a smaller four-cylinder engine, yet still have decent acceleration. That of course also means that the MX-5 is not going to be a hot rod. It's not going to be a Mustang GT competitor. We're talking 6.3 to 6.5 seconds, 0 to 60, depending on the model that you get. The MX-5 is about driving precision and, of course, the style of the vehicle, because we have these very classic, compact Roadster proportions. We also have a very compact size overall. At 154 inches long, this is about 3 feet shorter than a Ford Mustang. You heard that right, 3 feet. There aren't very many Roadsters for sale in the United States, but one that definitely comes to mind is BMW's Z4, and it's a full foot longer than the MX-5 that we're driving right here. The side profile is really the area where the hard top and the soft top differ because the hard top gets this buttress form right here. The side buttress in the MX-5 RF is due as much to Mazda's desire to make this a very distinctive shaped vehicle as certain practicalities about where are you going to put the top. The interesting thing here is that we don't lose any trunk space in the MX-5 RF because this top goes in the same place that the soft top does in the regular Miata. That somewhere is right back here, sort of between the trunk and the main passenger compartment in the vehicle. In order to do that, the roof of the vehicle comes apart in the two sections that you see here, this upright section right here, and then the one right behind it. The rear window pops out as a separate piece and also collapses into that storage area. Let me hop in and press this button so we can see what's going on. You'll notice that everything is now folding away, and then this section right here with those buttresses actually comes right back on the car. The result is a little reminiscent of a Targa top or perhaps an Alfa Romeo 4C where you can remove the center section, but you have to stow it somewhere. However, this is considerably more practical. Because of the space constraints in the MX-5 RF, this bar stays in place, but the rear window is actually gone, as you can see right there. This does cause a little bit more buffeting than we find in the soft top, but overall it's still a pleasant experience. They put a very small plexiglass divider in right here to help block some of the wind. We'll show you that in a little bit. And of course, we still have the roll bars behind the headrests. The lightweight construction of the MX-5 allows us to have these relatively skinny 205 width tires. Now you'll notice these are a little bit wider than the base tires that we find in the soft top MX-5. And that's because the hard top adds an extra 115 pounds. Adding 115 pounds to a modern three row crossover wouldn't make too much of a difference, but in a vehicle that's this light, it ends up being about a 5% weight increase. The front of the MX-5 looks a little bit different than other Mazdas out there, but the rear definitely looks like a Mazda. It also kind of reminds me a little bit of the Jaguar F-Pace. We have these round tail lamps with this other light pipe that goes right there off to the side. One thing you'll notice back here is we don't have a backup camera at all because that would add extra weight. The MX-5 has never been about acceleration, and that's really obvious when we take a look under the hood for two reasons. The first one is that in the United States, we get a larger engine than you find 
under the hood of Japanese or European MX-5s. This is a 2-liter 4-cylinder engine and it produces 155 horsepower. The engine is mated to your choice of either a 6-speed manual transmission or a 6-speed automatic. Although 155 horsepower may not sound that exciting, keep in mind that even though this is the heaviest MX-5 Miata made, this still weighs about 1,000 pounds less than your average mid-size sedan. Instead, the MX-5's focus is on precision handling, and that's really obvious when you take a look under the hood as well, because of how everything is laid out. The front axle is right about here. It actually is just about at the front of the engine, perhaps even just a little bit behind the engine. That gives the MX-5 an excellent weight balance. The excellent weight balance and the overall suspension design was created in order to give the driver the maximum amount of feedback. Mazda's dedication to lightweight construction has an effect on front seat comfort. The seat is a manual seat, it slides forwards and backwards, it has a recline function, but it can't recline any further than it is right now with the seat as far back in its tracks as it is. This seat offers no height adjustment ability, although I have been told that some dealers will adjust the height of the seat for you, you can't adjust it on the fly, so I can't suddenly decide I need the seat up a little bit or down a little bit. Now the front of the seat bottom cushion does adjust up and down with a knob right here at the front of the seat. This means that if you're a taller person or a much shorter person than I am, you may have difficulties finding an ideal driving position in the MX-5. In reality, this cabin is perhaps best suited for people between about 5 foot 5 and perhaps about 6 foot 1, but that is pushing it a little bit. This seat is all the way back in its tracks, and this is my ideal driving position. We don't have a telescopic steering column, instead we have one that simply tilts. With a car this small, the trunk is obviously fairly small as well. But we actually have four and a half cubic feet of storage space right here under the trunk lid. That's a very, very slight reduction versus the soft top MX-5. Again, the reason for that is that the hard top fits in essentially the same compartment as the soft top does, which is actually in front of the trunk lid. That means in our 24 inch roller bag test, I was able to fit one of those 24 inch roller bags right back there in the trunk. If you have roller bags that are about 21 or 22 inches in size, which is about the maximum that you can carry on a domestic flight, you might be able to squeeze two of them right back here if you're very, very careful. That's made possible by the overall design of the MX-5 and the fact that we won't find a spare tire back here. Thanks to the surprising size of the trunk for a vehicle like this, I'm going to give this 3 out of 10 points when it comes to our exclusive trunk comfort index. There are a number of convertibles out there that are much larger than the MX-5 that have much smaller trunks, especially when the top is down. Moving to the inside, we see this plastic wind deflector right here, again because we don't have the rear window in place if the top is down. The leather seats in our trim feature contrasting stitching, and you notice we have perforations in the headrest. That's because we have speakers integrated into the front seats as well. Although Alfa Romeo's 4C Spider is not really competition to the Mazda MX-5, I like comparing it to this vehicle because they both went after an ultra lightweight mission. However, when you take a look at this interior, we have a much more finished interior than we find in the Alfa. We have soft touch inserts, there's also a soft touch armrest, and we have a little bit more style going on on the front doors. Keep in mind that this actually weighs less than the Alfa Romeo 4C Spider, even though that vehicle is made from carbon fiber, and this is actually made out of steel. Moving from the doors on over to the dashboard, we don't find a glove compartment on the passenger side. That is a weight saving measure. We do, however, find an infotainment and navigation system integrated into the dashboard. This is the same basic system that we find in a variety of other Mazda models. The system uses a touch screen that can be operated when you're standing still, or a controller knob in the dashboard that can be used while you're moving. Below the infotainment screen, we have two air vents. The round ones in the dashboard, there are three of them, offer a closed knob. You rotate that right in the center. We have a start stop button and a single zone for the climate control system. The model that we're driving is equipped with a six speed automatic transmission with a manual mode. We pull the shifter over towards the driver and then pull towards the driver for up, push away from the driver for down. There are also paddles on the back of the steering wheel. We have a small storage cubby right over here that does not quite fit an iPhone 7 Plus all the way in there. You'll find two USB inputs and the SD card for the navigation database, along with an auxiliary input. Moving over to the right of that, we see a cup holder. This is a removable design. You can slip it into that slot right there in the passenger footwell, or you can actually put it sort of between the front seats. Behind the shifter, we have a drive mode selector that allows us to engage the sport mode, and we find the controller for the infotainment and navigation system. Direct access buttons to navigation, media, home. We also have a favorites button, a back button, power and volume knob, sort of like we see in certain Audi products, and then the controller knob which toggles left to right, up, down, rotates around, and clicks down to enter. Between the front seats we have a very, very small storage cubby which is just about the right size to put older smartphones that are very small 
or your keys or other small knickknacks. And then we find two additional slots right back there. Those are where you can put the cup holder and it's a little bit more convenient than in the passenger footwell. There's also a second one of these cup holders that you can snap on this side for the driver. Continuing behind that, we actually have an optical disc player in the MX-5. It's right back here between the front seats. And then above that, we have our glove compartment. This is where you can store your manuals, or you can also put those two cup holders. The instrument cluster is a little similar to what we see in the Mazda 3. We have this large central tachometer, and then we have a speedometer on the right. On the left side, we have a color multifunction display that is circular to match the other gauges. Everything that you're seeing over here in this left module is part of that LCD, from the engine temperature gauge to the fuel gauge, and of course, the trip computer right there in the middle. In addition to trip computer information, we can also get maintenance information, navigation directions, distance to empty as well. The steering wheel is a three-spoke design with the shift paddles that I mentioned earlier. Down is over here on the left and up is over there on the right. You'll find small sport grips on either side up above the middle spokes, volume controls, track forward, backward, the info button right here in the middle controls that multifunction display. There's also a voice command button and direct access phone buttons on the steering wheel. On the right side of the steering wheel, we find the controls for the cruise control system. If you're looking for mind warping acceleration, then you're looking at the wrong car. We ran from zero to 60 in 6.5 seconds. That zero to 60 time is a hair slower than the last MX-5 that we tested, which was the soft top, logically because this is heavier. That's also a little bit slower than the very closely related Fiat 124 Spider, which has a turbocharged engine under the hood. If you want to go from zero to 60 faster than 6.5 seconds, there are a wide variety of vehicles out there that will do that, but none of them will do it with quite as much precision as the MX-5. The light curb weight is very noticeable in the braking score. We ran from 60 miles an hour back to zero in 111 feet, which is very short for a vehicle with 205 width tires. Again, that light curb weight is really what's doing that for you. Handling is, of course, what the MX-5 is all about, and this is absolutely excellent out on the road. But the MX-5 is not about absolute grip, because you'll find grippier vehicles from a wide variety of manufacturers. The BMW Z4 will hold the road better than this. Certain Mustangs, certain Camaros will definitely hold the road better than the MX-5. But they're not going to feel as light, they're not going to feel as nimble, they're not going to be as communicative with the driver and the road helping you know really what's going on with those front tires. Some reviewers say that the MX-5 is undertired, that the tires are just too small for the vehicle, but that is the point of this car. Very much like we see in the Scion FRS, the narrower tires are deliberately designed to allow you to have fun at lower speeds in this vehicle than you would need in something like a Porsche 911. You can sort of think of this as baby's first track car in a way. When it comes to suspension tuning, the MX-5 has always been more of a grand tourer than an absolute performance vehicle, and that makes this much more comfortable out on gravel roads like this. This is an awful lot softer feeling than many performance cars out there. Some people out there think that the MX-5 is just a little bit too soft, that there's a little bit too much body roll, but I would actually disagree because the MX-5 does not need to have a rock hard suspension because of the light curb weight, because they're able to give this car a softer, more compliant suspension that's more suitable for daily driving, and you still have good performance and good handling. The MX-5 effectively straddles the fence between firm and soft when it comes to overall suspension tune. Most MX-5 models have a single layer fabric soft top, and they scored 76 decibels at 50 miles an hour in our cabin noise score. There are a few models that have a double layer fabric soft top that are about one decibel quieter. The model that we're driving is of course the hard top and this does cut down on the wind noise just a little bit versus the soft top. However, this is not as insulated as hard tops that you'll find in for instance a BMW 4 Series. So when we did our 50 mile an hour cabin noise test, we scored about the same 75 decibels as the MX-5 with the double layer soft top. It's worth noting that the hard top does cut down on headroom just a little bit on the outboard side of the seat. As we've come to expect from modern Mazda vehicles, fuel economy has been absolutely excellent. We've scored 32 miles per gallon over a week of very mixed driving, so this very easily gets an A when it comes to economy. As I said before, the hard top is about 5% heavier than the soft top, and you do notice that difference out on the road. Acceleration times are about one-tenth of a second slower than the soft top version of the MX-5. The reason this was two-tenths of a second slower than the last one we tested is because the last one was a soft top and it had the manual transmission. There's about one-tenth of a second difference between those. The other area you'll notice the difference is in the handling. Now Mazda did go back and they tweaked the suspension of the MX-5 to handle the extra weight of the vehicle and make it feel a little bit more similar to the soft top 
but this still feels just a little bit less nimble, a little bit less eager than the Softop MX-5. Now the difference is very slight because when I first started driving this vehicle out on the road, my memories came flooding back of the MX-5 and how much fun that it was. And I thought to myself, it really hasn't lost anything. But driving this back to back with a dealer provided soft top model, there is a very slight difference. Now it's not huge, it is very small, but it is definitely still there. The difference between the two vehicles is not quite as large as the difference between the MX-5 and the Fiat 124 Spider, which is very closely related, but again, you can still tell the difference. My bottom line out on the road with the MX-5 is that this is an incredible amount of fun and it is such an affordable vehicle that this is the kind of fun car that you can have and drive to work every day if you wanted to. Most two-seat vehicles require far more compromise than the MX-5. We have that decently sized trunk, we have a top that goes up and down in about 13 seconds in this particular vehicle. We have that manual activated top in the soft top version of the MX-5 that is very easy to use. The suspension is not rock hard and punishing and it's just a joy to drive every day out on fun winding roads. If my money was on the line and I was looking for one of the best fun to drive buys in the industry, the MX-5 would definitely be on my list. At $31,555, the RF version of the MX-5 Miata may seem like it's a decent bump over the base MX-5. But if you take a look closer, you'll notice that the MX-5 RF does not start in the base sport trim. The jump from the sport trim on up to the club trim accounts for most of the price difference between the soft top and the hard top in terms of base trim. The actual delta between the soft top club and the hard top club model is actually only about $2,000. The $2,000 jump between the soft top club and the hard top club seems reasonable to me because not only do we get the hard top, which obviously costs more to make, it's also powered and the soft top in the club model, just like in the Sport and the Grand Touring, is a manual top. If that still seems like a big price difference to you, then consider buying the Grand Touring trim because for some reason the difference between the soft top model and the hard top model actually shrinks down to 1,676. If I were shopping for an MX-5, I have to say that I would probably buy the Grand Touring model because I like the additional luxury features that we get in that model, the adaptive lighting system, the leather upholstery, the factory navigation, etc. You don't really give up that much in terms of overall handling feel versus the club model, although you do have to give up the brake package and the limited slip differential. Although I like the look of the MX-5 RF with that buttressy look behind the driver and the front passenger, I have to admit that I didn't really get the point of a hard top Miata. Although the hard top model adds only a little more than 100 pounds to the MX-5 in terms of overall curb weight, it does seem to be just a little bit against the mission of making the ultra light car in the first place. When I started digging a little bit deeper, I discovered that I was not alone in not understanding the hardtop initially. Because interestingly enough, although more customers actually bought hardtop versions of the MX-5 in some calendar years versus the softtop model, they're not really the same shopper. In fact, according to Mazda, only one quarter of softtop shoppers will ever even consider the hardtop model. So hardtop shoppers and softtop shoppers apparently are two different kinds of people. With that, let's move on to comparisons, and quite logically, our first comparison has to be MX-5 hardtop versus MX-5 softtop. Personally, I would argue that the softtop MX-5 is the purest expression of MX-5-ness, or Miata-ness, or whatever you want to call a modern, ultra-lightweight car like this. Mazda has gone to extreme lengths in order to lighten the MX-5. The lighter the curb weight, the better the handling, the better the braking, the better the ride, etc. And in some ways, the RF goes a little bit against the grain by adding back in 113 pounds to the car. Driven back to back, the extra weight is noticeable. But if you aren't driving the back to back, the RF feels just like the MX-5 that you're used to. Except, of course, that the RF will have the hard top. So if you just don't like opening and closing a manual top yourself, or if you prefer the look or the added security of the hard top, then the RF is for you. If you want the ultimate expression of the MX-5, I would say that actually is still the soft top. The price delta between the two is relatively small, and I would say that the hardtop is a very good value because of that. Next up, we have the MX-5 versus the Fiat 124 Spider. The MX-5 was designed very early on to be both a soft top and a hardtop. Interestingly enough, very early on, Mazda also knew that they would need a partner to help them make the MX-5. The reason for that is obvious. It costs a lot of money to make a vehicle like the MX-5, make it ultralight, make it handle well, etc and they don't sell that many of them. And this is where Fiat joined the party. They helped fund the MX-5 development, and as a result, they ended up with the Fiat 124 Spider, also known as the Fiata. 
Put very simply, the 124 Spider is a variation on a theme. We have a different exterior and we have a different engine, but everything else that you see is Mazda. It uses exactly the same interior, the same instrument cluster, it even uses the same transmissions. The engine is the biggest difference between the 124 Spider and the MX-5 because the Fiat has a turbocharged engine. And although factory 0 to 60 is not that far off between the 124 Spider and the MX-5, if you want to modify your vehicle aftermarket, it's very easy to get more power out of that Fiat turbocharged engine. If you're looking for 180 to 200 horsepower out of your MX-5, that is definitely the way to go because it's going to cost less to get you to that horsepower target than if you were to buy the MX-5 from Mazda. Almost all of the pros and cons that apply to the MX-5 also apply to the Fiat 124 Spider. It has a slightly larger trunk, but the driver's seat does not move in any more ways than it does in the MX-5, so the driver height really is still limited to a specific range. If you're a lot shorter than I am or a lot taller than I am, you may have difficulties finding an ideal driving position in either vehicle. Of course, Fiat 124 Spider to MX-5 RF, the hard top versus the soft top debate comes right back into play. Next up, we have the Toyota 86 and the Subaru BRZ. These are not quite the same thing, of course, because they're not convertibles and the MX-5 RF is. The Toyota and the Subaru were another joint venture vehicle, very much like the MX-5 and the Fiat. The real trouble with MX-5 comparisons is that there is nothing else like the MX-5 in the United States, other than the other MX-5 and the Fiat 124 Spider, which is really just another MX-5. But if you're looking for a fun, affordable two-door car, I could logically see cross-shopping the Toyota 86 and the Subaru. Although the Toyota 86 has more power under the hood, it doesn't end up actually being faster than the MX-5 because it is considerably heavier. If you refer back to the early part of the video where we had that curb weight chart up, you'll notice the difference. Despite the added curb weight, however, some of the themes in the Toyota 86 are similar to the Mazda MX-5. Toyota was going after a relatively simple vehicle that was affordable that you could take out on the track and have a great deal of fun. Therefore, like the Mazda MX-5, the Toyota 86 has a fairly limited amount of power under the hood, so it's not going to be as fast as a Mustang or a Camaro or some of those other sporty cars out there, and it's not going to handle as well either. Toyota was interested more in handling precision and the ability to kick out the rear end of the vehicle at lower speeds than overall actual grip. Although the visions that Toyota and Mazda both had when creating their vehicles were somewhat similar, I think the Mazda MX-5 is the better expression overall because it actually manages to be ultra lightweight rather than weighing just a little bit less than your average compact sedan. It also is much more fun out on the road. We get more steering feel. Even though the rear end is very easy to kick out in the BRZ and the Toyota 86, it's simply more fun to do in the MX-5. In addition to that, the engine that we find under the hood of the MX-5 is a joy to rev, and the boxer engine that we find under the hood of the FRS, the BRZ, and the 86 is just a little bit rough around the edges. Now the Toyota 86 is very well priced, but I have to say that if I were shopping, I would be willing to pay the extra to get the Mazda. Our last comparison is the BMW Z4. It's not really that logical of a comparison, but many of you on our Facebook page were asking about that comparison. In many ways, the Z4 is the superior vehicle. It accelerates better, it handles better, it has luxury options, it has a quieter cabin, it's much more comfortable. In some situations, it's even more fuel efficient than the MX-5. The trouble is, the Z4 is considerably more expensive than the MX-5. In fact, for your average configuration of Z4, you could buy two Mazda MX-5s. You could have a soft top for the summer and a hard top for the winter. In addition to that, even though the Z4 is faster and it handles better than the MX-5, it's not necessarily more fun because it's much more isolated. If you're interested in road feel and knowing what the front tires of your car are doing, the MX-5 is simply a better vehicle for that than the BMW Z4. In addition to that, it's also easier to attain. So if you're looking for a vehicle as a second car or even as an affordable daily driver, I think the MX-4 is a better buy than the BMW Z4. My top pick in this segment continues to be the Fiat 124 Spider because I really like the MX-5 soft top, but I also want the ability to modify that engine aftermarket and give it just a little bit more oomph. Not a lot, just a little bit. I like the soft top versions of the MX-5 because they are the pure expression of the MX-5 in some ways. And I realize it's a little bit silly to say that I like the pure expression of the MX-5 
and then I'm choosing a turbocharged MX-5 as my preferred option in this segment, but there's a reason for that. The turbocharged engine that we find in the Fiat 124 Spider produces that hair more power and a lot more low-end grunt. That means it's easier to drive the manual transmission in daily driving because you're not shifting quite as much. And if you still want even more power than that, you can get an engine computer upgrade or a turbocharger upgrade and get even more oomph. Now I'm not quite sure if I would upgrade the engine computer if I were to buy one, but I would definitely be thinking about it the entire time that I owned one. Quite logically, my second pick in this segment would be the MX-5 soft top, and then third would be the MX-5 hard top. Apparently Mazda's metrics are true, hard top shoppers and soft top shoppers are not the same kind of shopper, and apparently I'm a soft top shopper. Of course, if money was absolutely no object, the BMW Z4 is still hanging around. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. Again, I'm Alex Dykes, and this has been the 2017 Mazda MX-5 RF. Be sure and click those related videos down there at the bottom of your screen. You can also find us over at facebook.com slash alexandautos. And if you want to support this channel, head over to patreon.com and search for Alex and Autos. I'll see you next week.